All right, AI just had one of its absolute craziest weeks on record, and I've got three tools lined up that are legitimately blowing my mind right now. We're talking about a tool that can surgically fix any out-of-focus photo long after you've taken it, another one that turns static images into interactive video canvases where you literally draw what happens next, and finally, a portrait animation tool that is six times faster than the competition and frighteningly good at capturing facial nuances. Let's not waste any time and get right into it. First up, we have a really fascinating tool called Generative Refocusing that gives you absolute flexible control over the focus of a single image long after you've taken it. Basically, you can change the focus of different areas in any photo, completely defocus specific parts, or add surgical blur wherever you want, and it all works through AI. Let me show you some examples so you can see just how powerful this is. If you look at this example, you'll notice a depth map at the top corner. The AI essentially operates based on this map to understand the 3D space of your 2D image. Whether it's a subject in the background or foreground, the focus changes naturally. You can see this clearly in the Joker example. Based on that depth map, the focus shifts in a remarkably effective way. This is incredibly useful because we've all been there. You take a shot without checking it carefully and later realize the object you actually wanted to highlight is blurry. The massive advantage here is that you can go back and fix that mistake in post-production. Look at how impressively the focus shifts in this clip. Notice how it handles the background and foreground relationship. Based on that depth map, it's blurring and de-blurring seamlessly. Here's a fairly complex example with four people where you can see the focus shifting from the defocused background right to the front. By focusing on the front and then defocusing it, the background comes into sharp focus. This means you can pick any custom area or any specific person to lock onto while defocusing everything else, and it looks completely natural. We see this again in another multi-person example with about six people where the tool lets you hop the focus from one person to another. There are tons of examples that show the versatility here. Look at this shot of five girls where the input image originally only has focus on the girl in the middle, leaving the kids in front and behind are blurry. But in the processed image, the focus has been completely shifted, so all the girls are equally sharp. This is extremely powerful. You can also see this before image where the focus should have been on the people posing, but the camera accidentally locked onto the girl taking the photo. After processing it with this tool, you can see how wonderfully it brought the defocused background subjects into focus. It's not just that the focus shifted, it actually recovered the details, so both the foreground and background are in focus together. You can basically bring all subjects in a blurry image into high definition no matter where the defocus originally was. I also want to show you specific refocusing examples where you deliberately shift focus for creative effect. In this example, where a girl in the front is initially in focus while the swings and rides behind her are blurred. After processing, the girl becomes defocused and the swings in the background come into crystal clear focus. You can shift focus in this manner with incredible precision. Now let me show you some comparison examples to demonstrate why this tool is actually better than the alternatives out there. You can see the input image on the left, and in the middle is an image generated by Nano Banana Pro that was instructed to bring the background into focus. If you compare them, you'll notice the Nano Banana actually changed the posture of the man standing there. His facial angle was altered. It did the blur, sure, but it changed the details of the reality. Now look at the result from generative refocusing on the right. The man's angle is exactly the same, his facial structure hasn't changed, and everything else is preserved. It just defocused the foreground and fixed the background perfectly. We see this again in another comparison where the Nano Gamana, when asked to focus on the woman, zoomed the picture out slightly and hallucinated parts of her face that weren't there before. Generative refocusing made no such changes to the content. It executed the defocus exactly as requested without altering your image's integrity. So how does this magic actually work? Under the hood, generative refocusing uses a two-stage diffusion model approach built on the Flux 1 dev backbone. The first stage is called deBlurNet, which recovers a sharp all-in-focus image from any input using a diffusion model guided by initial deblurring predictions. The second stage is BokehNet, which creates fully customizable bokeh considering user-defined focus planes, bokeh intensity, and even aperture shapes. What makes this especially powerful is the semi-supervised training approach. 
it combines synthetic paired data to maintain that geometric consistency I mentioned, while also using unpaired real-world bokeh images that have camera EXIF metadata, allowing the model to learn real lens characteristics that simulators simply can't capture. Talking about availability, if we go to their GitHub repo where they've recently released everything, you can see complete installation instructions are available, and they've also released the model weights along with a Hugging Face Gradio demo. If you want to run it locally, you absolutely can follow their setup instructions. If you just want to try it out quickly without installing anything, they have a Hugging Face space where you can test it. You'll find the link to the project page in the description below. Next up, we have a really fascinating tool called World Canvas, where literally the world is your canvas. This one comes to us from Ant Group, part of the Alibaba ecosystem. And with World Canvas, you upload a static image, but the magic happens in how you interact with it. You aren't just typing a prompt and hoping for the best, you are drawing on the screen to control the action. For instance, look at this dog on the left. By simply drawing different lines, you control its behavior. Draw a circle and the dog spins around. Draw a sharp upward line and it jumps. Even more impressive, you can introduce a new character, scale it up, and the dog will actually react to it, like running away when a giant figure appears. It's an incredibly interactive sandbox with endless creative possibilities. Check out how nuanced this interaction really gets. Take this simple scene with a road and trees. You can draw a trajectory to make the camera move forward, then draw another line to add a person running down that road. You can even get mythical. Provide a text prompt for a dragon, draw a line from the sky to the street, and a dragon flies down and lands right there. The level of control is honestly quite impressive. Let me break down how this works so you understand the full power at play here. It's a combination of text prompts and physical gestures. For example, there's a prompt describing a girl spinning while taking a selfie with a rotating background. You type that in, but then you also draw the circular motion on the screen. She spins in the direction you drew, and you can even gesture to make the background revolve around her. You're combining semantic understanding from text with spatial control from drawing. A great example of this precision is speed control. You can prompt a character to walk and then run, but the AI looks at how fast you draw your line. Draw the trajectory slowly and the person walks. Speed up your drawing and they break into a run. That is next level control. You can even choreograph complex human interactions. In one clip, there's a man and a woman. By drawing the path, you instruct the man to lift the woman and spin her around. The video generates exactly according to your drawn choreography. You can build narratives this way too. Spin a girl around, then draw a path for a puppy to run in, and finally draw a path for her to pick up the puppy. It's like directing a movie in real time. There is also a powerful feature for making subjects appear and disappear. You can take an empty street, draw a line from the right for a car to drive in, and a line from the left for an old man to walk in. The system understands the physics and context. The man sees the car and turns back, while the car slows down to avoid him. You're writing the script with text, car drives in and stops, elderly man walks in, and the movement corresponds exactly to those trajectories. One of the coolest features is reference image-based generation. You can take two completely different reference images, say a Chinese-style painting of a person and a white bear, and drop them onto a snowy mountain. You write a prompt and draw the paths, and suddenly the painted person is riding the white bear through the snow, while a dragon flies overhead. It allows for some wild creativity. There's a funny example where a boy is pasted onto a background of the Eiffel Tower. You draw a path for a punch, and he hits the tower, making it collapse. It's not always perfect, but it lets you create impossible scenarios. We even see a shark emerging from desert sand as if it were water, moving with perfect fluid dynamics, all because the user drew the path and set the scene. So how does World Canvas actually pull this off under the hood? The system is built on the WAN 2.214B model using a diffusion transformer backbone trained with a flow matching framework. The core innovation here is something called spatial aware cross attention. This is critical because it aligns your text caption explicitly with your drawn trajectory so the model knows exactly which motion description belongs to which object. This is why you could have multiple things moving differently at the same time without the AI getting confused. It uses trajectory injection by representing your lines as Gaussian heat maps, propagating features along those points to ensure precise motion control. 
As for availability, good news, if you head to the GitHub repo, they've recently released the code. They've dropped the full inference code and two separate models, the standard World Canvas 14B and the reference to video variant. Now, regarding hardware, they don't explicitly list the VRAM requirements, but let's be real, this is a 14 billion parameter model. You're going to need significant VRAM to run locally, likely high-end enterprise GPUs. However, all the installation instructions are there if you have the hardware to run it. I've popped the link to the project page in the description below, so you can go check it out and start directing your own interactive videos. And finally, let's talk about our third and last tool, Flash Portrait. This thing is making some incredibly bold claims, specifically that it delivers infinite portrait animation six times faster than any normal portrait generation tool currently on the market. The team behind this is a literal who's who of the tech world, including Microsoft Research Asia, Tencent, Tongyi Lab, and Alibaba Group. They've all collaborated to release this breakthrough technology. Let me show you what this can actually do. Flash Portrait is basically similar to Wan Animate in concept, but there's a really important distinction you need to understand. While Wan Animate is broad and can copy full body movements like dancing and complex choreography, Flash Portrait is hyper specialized. It is strictly limited to capturing facial movement, lip sync, head tilt, and eye movement. If you look at these examples, you'll see the reference image on the left and the driving video in the middle. Notice how the lower body remains completely still in the output, only the head, hair, and eyes are moving. This focused approach isn't a limitation, it's actually the secret sauce that enables those incredible speed improvements. Check out this next example to see what I mean. You have the input image and the driving video, and the output captures the lip movement, eye glances, and eyebrow expressions with genuine precision. It's remarkably good at copying these specific facial elements. Even when the person in the driving video is moving their hands or shifting their body, the output video ignores that entirely. It filters out the noise and only copies the lip, head, and eye movements. This makes it a genuinely excellent tool if you specifically need facial movement without the complexity of full body animation. We see this again in the multi-output demonstration, where a single driving video transfers expressions onto completely different subjects pretty good. They've also done extensive comparisons that really demonstrate why this tool is superior for long-form content. They compared their results against heavyweights like Live Portrait, X Portrait, Annie Portrait, Fantasy Portrait, and Wan Animate, specifically testing them up to a range of frames. Here's the kicker. As the frame count hits around 1700 or beyond, the outputs from all the competing methods start to degrade. You get color drift, identity and consistency, and severe face distortion. But Flash Portrait, shown in the lower right, continues working flawlessly until the very end. It genuinely supports infinite length generation without the artifacts that plague the others. So how does this technology actually work under the hood? Flash Portrait is built on the WAN 2.1 14B Diffusion Transformer backbone, but the real innovation lies in three key technical components. First, they introduced normalized facial expression blocks to replace standard image cross-attention blocks. These blocks solve a critical problem where the distance between diffusion latents and raw facial embeddings causes the face to lose its identity. They use a PDFGC face encoder to capture head pose, eyes, emotion, and mouth embedding separately, then normalize them to keep the identity stable across thousands of frames. Second, for long video generation, they use a weighted sliding window denoising strategy. Unlike conventional methods, this assigns specific weights to the overlapping areas between adjacent windows and fuses them together. This is absolutely critical for creating those smooth blending effects so the video doesn't jitter or jump over time. Third, and this is the magic behind the six times speed up, is the adaptive latent prediction acceleration mechanism. The system uses Taylor expansion to mathematically predict latents at future time steps. Because facial motion is complex and fluctuates wildly, they designed dynamic functions that adaptively refine these predictions based on how much the face is moving. This ensures you get high speed without the accumulation errors that usually make fast animations look cheap.
Now, regarding availability and code, if we head over to their GitHub repository, they have recently released the full inference code, but importantly, the specific code for that adaptive latent prediction, the speed boost tech, is still marked as coming soon on their roadmap. The rest of the installation instructions are all there. However, if we look at the model weights on Hugging Face, the total file size is about 58 gigabytes, so realistically, you cannot run this on consumer-grade hardware right now. You would need substantial VRAM to run this locally until a quantized version is released. I'll provide the link to the project page in the description below so you can keep an eye on it. So, those were today's three cutting-edge AI tools that have been recently launched. Go check them out, and I'll catch you in the next one.